Summary tables are covered in section 6.7 uh, in week 6. So let's dive into it. Why do summary tables? I briefly described it in the beginning in the intro for this week, but summary tables basically are a way to summarize the whole sample that you're dealing with, right? It's, it's often used to summarize lots of variables that you're using. Um, this is definitely a requirement in any kind of academic paper where you first provide a summary table of basic descriptives of, of, of your sample, right? Um, and what's different than what I've shown you before is that it actually shows different, summarizes different types of variables. So sometimes you have maybe percentages um, for categorical or binary variables, but then you also have means or medians or, or, or whatever you want there, min and max values for continuous variables or numeric variables, right? That have a larger range of, of, of values. So I'm going to show that how to, how to display both in one table. Again, as always in R, there's a million ways to do this, and um, some are more complicated, some are less complicated, some are more beautiful, others are a little bit simpler. Um, so I'm going to show you how to use the uh, GT summary package to do this. It's a fairly new package, and I really like the look of these tables, and they're um, also easily integratable into, um, into any type of output that you want to produce. So let's go to R um, and we're going to produce the table tab 4 underscore 1 based on our student's data set as always. We're first going to just select the variables that we want to include the in the table. Um, and this is country of birth, sex, the relationship status, the age, the number of terms that students are studying at the university, their life satisfaction, and whether they have a job or not, right? So let's do that quickly. Tab 401, you see, well, only our couple of variables that we want are in there. And now, incredibly simple, we just use the table summary function. And it's a, a really a wrapper function that automatically builds the, the graph based on the summary, right? Um, sorry, the table based on the summary. So this now is not a data frame anymore, the object, the type of object now changed, it's becoming a TBL summary object. So you got to call on it separately and it will produce a table. And it's taking actually a really long time. I'm not sure why that is, let's check it out. And you see here, this is what the table looks like. Um, and for example, for the country of birth, we have here uh, the number of students and then the percentage um, of students that are from Austria and so forth. So we got several statistics combined in one. This is useful. We have it for sex relationship, for age, which is here now a different statistic, right? We have a mean, so the average age of students is 25.9, and we also have a min and max here. And these are the default statistics that the, that the function will give you. But now we have something a little curious here for the term we have all of the terms uh, uh, reported in terms of absolute numbers and percentages, and they're also not ordered. So something weird going on there. Same with the life satisfaction. For Actually, for every life satisfaction value, we have a separate category. And well, this is definitely not what we want, right? So something went wrong there. We have to go back to the data. Let's do that, check out. Um, the data set again, structure the data set. Um, and we see that actually term is it's still a character variable. So R doesn't know it's actually numbers that you could summarize, right? Um, same with the life satisfaction value variable. It's a character variable, but so you need to convert it. We've done this before, you know how to do it. So it's basically overriding the student's data frame, then using the mutate function and saying uh, life satisfaction equals um, life satisfaction as numeric, using the as numeric function. Same for the term variable here, um, but broken up by a comma. So if we run that, both variables are turned into um, numeric variables, and then we run the same command again. And actually, we're also going to go ahead here and in the table summary function, use the option missing equals no, which exclude all the missing, missing values. Um, so we're going to call that again. And you see immediately, it's 
say. It looks a lot nicer now. Term, life satisfaction are actually summarized as numeric variables. We see on average students study at the university for seven terms and uh, on a scale from a zero to a hundred they have a life satisfaction slightly above 50, 59. So I guess they're not really happy but also not very unhappy. Um, okay. Now actually let's break down this um, these summary statistics. Uh, this is often done. Uh, we actually don't want to just have the simple summaries for each variable um, below each other. We actually want to break this down by a separate variable, right? We want to break this down uh, for faculty, for example. This is what the next command does here. In the table summary um, command, you can specify the column variable that you want to break it up by, right? So here we add, um, we add an option after the comma within the table summary function, which is by equals C for, for the vector, and then in quotation marks, faculty, right? This will break it up by faculty. We're also going to do some formatting here. We're actually going to label our variables. So they, um, if you use this in a report or a paper and others see it, they actually know what these variables are and, and it's a little bit more informative, right? So this is done by using the label option, label equals, and then you add a list. And the list refers to the name of each um, variable in your table and then the tilde sign and then whatever you want to call it, country of birth, for example, for COB. Don't forget the parentheses in the end, right? The closing brackets are always very important. Let's run that and see what this new table looks like. And we see it's already a lot more important, right? Now you have for each faculty at the university, business, economics, political science, sociology, you have where students are from, both in total numbers and in their percentages. You have the sex distribution, the relationship status, the average age in years, right? For example, it seems like in the business faculty, uh, faculty they are on average a little bit older than in the other uh, faculties. And uh, the life satisfaction, for example, seems to be the highest here, which is in the economics department. Highly unlikely, but um, it's, it, as I said, it's all uh, fake data. Um, in terms of part-time jobs, right, we, this is now a, again a binary variable, a categorical variable where we only have yes or no. So we're going to get here percentages and we see that, for example, um, only 41% in the economics department have a part-time job. All right, so already a lot nicer. Um, now let's go ahead and actually um, add statistics that we want to see because here um, we still have, scroll down, we have the median actually, right, which um, is different than the mean, of course. Um, I provide some links in the online course to, to, for you to kind of get a, get a reminder of, of what that is, but the median is basically cutting all the values at the 50% and seeing who is, uh, you know, half of the sample has less or more than, um, than this value. So we, now we're reporting the median, actually the entire quartile range. We want to change that and you can do that manually in the table summary um, command by adding an option here statistic equals and then you say all of the variables that are continuous that are metric by all underscore continuous empty brackets tilde for those variables we want the mean and we want the minimum value of the maximum value okay we run all of that again new table is produced and we see now now the the actual statistics that the table shows have changed we now have means and we now have minimums and maximum values in the parentheses. So for example, the age in um, the sociology department varies from 18 to 34. So the youngest student in the sociology department is 18, the oldest is 34. Okay, so you have complete control over what type of statistics the table summary function puts together. Lastly, I find that a little clunky. I find it not very um, pretty how it's all next to each other, right? It's, it's combining a lot of information here. It's not very easy to read. So another thing you can do with the table summary function is actually to put it below each other using all continuous tilde 
continuous to. Okay, don't ask me why that is, but it's adding a type option here in the command. Comma type equals all the continuous variables should be in the format of continuous to. Let's try that out and see what it looks like. It's loading. Now it's done. Well, and now we see that actually for all the continuous variables, we get separate rows of statistics. We get the mean, the minimum, and the maximum. And this is a little bit easier to read, especially if you have really long tables, so your tables don't become too cluttered. All right, this is um, how you produce a summary table using the TBL underscore summary command. One that I really like, as I said, there are many, many more ways to do this, to, to produce other types of, of summary tables, but this is one sort of easy and quite effective way to do it.